All right, guys, welcome back to Conceptual Physics, Projectile Motion, Part 2 of Angled Problems. Examples? Okay, here we go. You're going out golfing with your friends and want your golf ball to go as far as possible. At what angle from the ground should you hit your golf ball so it could go as far as possible? If you want to take a guess, uh, think about that. At what angle will this go the furthest? Feel free to do that. The answer is going to be 45 degrees. So when you are launched from the ground, if you want it to go the furthest an object can go, you want to launch it from a 45 degree angle. Okay, anything more and it won't go as far. Anything less and it won't go as far. Okay, meaning if they were all shot out at the same speed. Okay, so 45 degree angle. All right, next question. You're going out golfing with your friends and want your golf ball to be in the air for as long as possible. At what angle from the following choices should you hit your golf ball so it could have the most amount of air time? Explain. Okay, think about it. The answer is going to be 60 degrees. And the reason for that is the larger the angle is, that means that there's going to be more velocity in the y direction. And the more velocity in the y direction, that means the higher it's going to go up, and the higher it's going to go up, it's going to be more in the air. Uh, for example, if we shot it really far, but most of it's in the x direction, it's just going to hit the ground, you know, pretty quickly because there's not much velocity in the y direction. So, sixty degrees is the correct answer here, but only because it's the highest angle. Uh, the truth is, ninety degrees th hitting it straight up. Uh, would be give you the greatest amount of air time. Okay. A soccer ball is kicked at 30 degrees and and hits the ground at a certain distance, sorry, <laughs> a certain distance from where it was kicked. At what other angle could it have been kicked with the same speed and it would have hit the ground at the same spot? Okay, so this is kicked at 30 degrees and it lands right there. So we want to know what other angle it could be kicked at and it'll land at this same spot. Okay. You can think about it, but what it's going to be is this 60 degree right here. So if it's kicked something like this, it'll go like this and it'll land at that same spot. And how do we know this? There's kind of multiple ways. But we learned before that 45 degrees, let's say this is 45 degrees, 45 degrees is the angle where from the ground it would go the furthest. So kind of like symmetrically, if this is 45 degrees, 30 degrees is 15 degrees this way, uh, 45 minus 15 is 30. And then 60 degrees is 15 degrees this way from, 50, uh, from 45. So 45 plus 15 is 60. Okay, so this kind of like has the symmetry. An easier way to just think about it is just like what adds up to 90. So 30 plus 60 equals 90. Um, 10 plus 80 equals 90. Those will also land at the same spot. Uh, 15 and 65 degrees will, uh, no, no, 50 and 75 degrees would uh, land at the same spot. So Whatever adds up to 90 will land at the same spot if it's hit from the level ground. Or you could think about it from the 45 degree, whichever one is easier for you. Okay, so let's look at this one. A sack ball is kicked at 70 degrees and hits the ground a certain distance from where it was kicked. At what other angle could it have been kicked with the same speed and it would have hit the ground at the same spot? I'll let you think about it. Answer is 20 degrees. Again, I just explained in the last video, so I won't explain it uh, now. All right, let's look at this. The wolves are back, and this time they want more than pumpkins. Uh-oh. Rolina climbs a tree with all the cubs and starts throwing sticks at the wolf. Rolina throws the sticks at an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal. The sticks hit the ground 11 meters from the base of the tree, uh, hit the ground 11 meters from the base of the tree, and take 1.8 seconds to hit the ground from where it was thrown. With what speed was the sticks thrown? Okay, first, let's kind of see what's going on first of all she's throwing these sticks at an angle below the horizontal this would be 30 degrees 
and the sticks land it says uh 11 meters from the base of the tree so it's going to be like 11 meters from where she's throwing it here uh and it's going to take a time of 1.8 seconds to hit the ground great um so as always i want to start out with making an x and y chart after i've kind of written down all that i know as always also i like starting out with acceleration because it's pretty much always the same negative 10 and zero and what else do we know um we know the time is the same for both 1.8 seconds oops sorry Arr, sorry <laughs> time equals 1.8 seconds great and we also know uh 11 meters from the base of the tree so we know the displacement in the x oh, dang it is equal to 11 meters okay um i guess that's pretty much it um anything else okay so with that piece those pieces of information we have three pieces of information in the x direction and since we have three pieces of information in the x direction that can help us to find another piece of information so we're trying to find what speed it was thrown so it'd be helpful if we could find the velocity in the x direction in the x direction since acceleration is zero we only have one formula vx equals displacement x divided by time so we have vx is equal to displacement which is 11 meters divided by time which is 1.8 and let me calculate what we have here 11 divided by 1.8 uh, 6.11 meters per second. Oh, sorry. That is not the answer. That is just the velocity in the x direction. In the x direction. Weird. 6.11 meters per second. Okay, so we know when she throws this, in the x direction, it's going 6.11 meters per second. However, that's not what it's asking. It's asking what it's thrown with which is this hypotenuse right here. Let me use a different um, color to solve this. Okay, so let's see. We have, we're throwing this. This is the speed that we're looking for. We know that this angle here is 30 degrees, and we know this Vx is 6.11. So let's use some trigonometry to figure this out. What I'm going to be doing is cosine, so ka toa. So I'm going to do ka. So I'm going to do cosine of 30 is equal to adjacent, which is this side, 6.11, divided by hypotenuse, which is the speed. And then I'm just going to manipulate this speed. I'm putting this to the other side. And then I'm going to put cosine to the bottom here is equal to 6.11 divided by cosine of 30. And let's see what we get. 6.11 divided by cosine of 30. And we get 7.06 uh, meters per second. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, the sticks don't do much damage. But after a short while, the father of the one-eyed cubs... One eye cubs, one eye lion comes and chases the wolves away. All right, so let's look at this. The cubs see their dad and horizontally run off the branch with a speed of eight meters per second. It takes 1.5 seconds to reach their dad, who is on the ground. A, how high up were the cubs from the ground? B, how far away was the fire, uh, father lion from the tree? Okay, so let's again kind of draw some things out. This is interesting. We haven't seen a problem like this. The cubs see their dad and horizontally run off the branch. So if we're looking at this guy over here, oops, not the best line. Uh, this guy is going to be horizontally jumping off at 8 meters per second. And it's going to take him 1.5 seconds to hit the ground. Um, and we want to first find out how high from the ground he is. So we're going to find this displacement in the y. Okay, so again, we're always starting out with writing down everything we know in the x and y. And the acceleration x and the y. Uh, x is 0, acceleration y, negative 10. 
Okay, and then what we know is he horizontally runs off with the speed of 8 meters per second. So the velocity in the x is 8 meters per second. And since it's horizontally run off at the very beginning, we know the initial velocity is zero. This is a zero launch angled problem. Uh, we also know that time is the same in both, uh, 1.5 seconds. Uh, time equals 1.5 seconds. And we want to know how high the cub jumped up from. So what we're looking for is this displacement in this y. Okay, let's figure this out. And so we're going to be using that formula. Displacement of y equals one half a y t squared. So this is going to be equal to one half negative ten, one point five squared. Squared times five, and we get negative eleven point two five meters. However, it asks how high was it from the ground, so that's just going to be a positive number, eleven point two five meters. How far away was the father lion from the tree? Okay, so now we're looking for this right here. Okay, we're looking for this displacement in the X. So we're wondering what this is going to be. Uh, I'm going to change the color. Uh, let's do this. Part B. So we're finding this displacement. Um, so again, for the X direction, we only have one formula. Vx is equal to displacement x divided by t, but we want to find what displacement is, so let's manipulate this. Displacement is equal to velocity x times time. So velocity in x is 8, time is 1.5. So let's do that. 8 times 1.5, get 12 meters. Boom. All right. The father rejoices with all his children, but keeps his one eye fixed on Rolina. We're coming for you, Rolina. All right, here we go. Um, the one-eyed lion notices Rolina and makes an aggressive motion toward her. While she is resting on the tree, the lion jumps upward with a speed of 12 meters per second and an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. What is the speed of the lion? 0 0.4 seconds after the jump. Okay, lots going on here. I actually want to draw this differently. We can draw it like this, but I'm just going to draw it a little differently. So we're just saying, okay, he's jumping off like this, 22 meters per second, and angle of 60 degrees. I just don't like this leftward, what, it's like face leftward. I guess it doesn't matter, but anyway, it's just bothering me a bit. So it's jumping like this, and we want to know after 0.4 seconds, uh, what the speed's going to be. So, um, let's figure some things out. X and Y. Acceleration in the X is 0. Acceleration of Y is uh, negative 10. We want to know what the speed is after 0 0.4 seconds. And um, we don't know the velocity in the X and the initial velocity in the Y. However, that is something we could figure out. So I'm going to use different color. And I'm going to figure this out. This is Vx and V initial in the Y. And we should know that the velocity in the X is just equal to the hypotenuse V initial 22 times cosine of 30. Uh, cosine of 60, sorry. And I know that this is just going to be 11 meters per second. So I could put 11 there. And the V initial in the Y is going to be this hypotenuse, which is 22, uh, times sine of 60. I did a lot of these already, so that's why I'm not going through all the work of it. But if not, please look at previous videos. So I'm going to do 22 times sine of 60. And it's going to be 19.05 meters per second. Okay. Great. Um, okay, so now that we found the initial velocity in the y, what we want to do is we want to find the velocity of y when it's at 0 0.4 seconds. So let's figure that out. Uh, final velocity in the y equals initial velocity in the y plus a y t. That's a formula we should know. And initial velocity is 19.05 plus acceleration y, which is negative 10, time, which is 0 0.4. So let's put this into my calculator, 19.05 minus 4 
15.05 meters per second. Okay. So that's how fast, let's say 0.4 seconds is like right here. So that's how fast it's going in the y direction. 15.05. And we should know in the x direction, it's always the same. Uh, there's no acceleration. So in the x direction, it's going to be going 11. So let's make a triangle with this. I'll use a different color. Maybe I'll do red. So we have 11 going this way. And then, oops, let me redraw this. Not the best drawing. Okay, we have 11 going this way. And then 15.05 going this way. And the hypotenuse, again, is the speed. It's not asking for the speed in the X or Y. It's just asking for the speed in general. So let's find that. We're going to use uh, Pythagorean theorem. So we know the speed is going to be equal to the square root of 11 squared plus 15.05 squared. So let's do that. 15.05 squared plus 11 squared. 18.64 meters per second. Okay, so after 0 0.4 seconds, that's how fast he's going. If the lion, part B now, if the lion jumped at a higher angle, how would this affect the height he is able to obtain off the ground and the distance he gets in the x direction? Explain. Okay, so he's already jumping at a pretty high angle here. Maybe I'll draw it here. He's already going at a pretty high angle. If he changed this angle, and uh, let's say he instead went more up this way. How would that change things? Well, and what's it saying? How would this affect the height he is able to obtain off the ground? Well, since he's going more in the y direction, he'd be able to go higher and the distance he gets in the x direction. However, remember the optimal angle that uh, to go further, I guess, in the x direction is 45 degrees. He's already at 60. So if he goes fur at a further angle than that, he's going to not go as far in the x direction, okay? The closer he can get to 45, the further he's going to be going in the x direction. But he's getting further away from 45, so that's why he's going to be going slower. Uh, he's going not going to be going as far, okay? All right, uh, the lion tackles Rolina to the ground. Uh-oh. All right, conclusion here. The lion tackles Rolina because he is overjoyed that she took care of his babies. Rolina and the lions become a little family hunting for apples and pumpkins. Rolina teaches each of the lions how to grow another eye. Very interesting. All right, guys. End of this part two. Next time, we're going to be finishing this off with advanced problems. And I look forward to seeing you for that. Thanks for watching, everyone.